This is week four, and we've been talking about persistent faith. And boy, I'll tell you, I just, I, I can't get off of this. We've talked so much. We started out by talking about how that, what it means to be a doer of the word. And, and we're going to go back through that today and just kind of, we, we want to continue to hit this. I'm telling you, I believe the number one, or it's got to be way high, I believe it's probably the number one reason why Christians are not receiving the promises of God in this realm. Why they're letting go is because they're taking their eyes off the Lord. They're just being a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. Then we talked about, which overlaps, we talked about what it means to continue in the word. You know, the whole Bible talks about this. All God says is, keep your eyes on me. As you keep your eyes on the word of God, Paul's letter to the church at Corinth said, as you peer in to the word of God, you're transformed into the image of Jesus from glory to glory. We know this, that God wants you to triumph in everything, and the Bible says that your Father will make you triumph in everything. Isn't that good news? So let's jump over here. We've talked about being a doer of the Word. We've talked about continuing in the Word. We talked last week about a point that you have to know this and gain revelation of it, how to, how to become fully persuaded. Strong faith, when you become strong in faith, you become fully persuaded persuaded that what God said is true. You'll believe it above your circumstances. We talked about patience, remember that? How we, through faith and patience, what is patience? Well, it's one of the fruit of our spirit, but it's a spiritual force. And I'm telling you, uh, it, it's, it, it's a spiritual force that literally, it works with faith, and as pressure comes against you, what it does is it undergirds and shores up your mind so that you can keep your eyes on the word of God so that, so that the word can go out and work and change that circumstance to come in line with the word of God. So we need all of these things. So turn over to James chapter 1, and I want to quickly just talk about this doer of the word again. Doer of the word, how we become a doer of the word. James chapter 1, verse 22. I want to encourage you, revelation knowledge, when we talk about revelation knowledge, this is an unveiling of the word of God. The, only the Holy Spirit can do that, but he can only do that if you have ears to hear. So this is why we reverence, we honor the word above everything else in our life. And so now I have ears to hear. So now when revelation knowledge comes and the word is revealed to me, now the word will become a lamp to my feet. It'll show me where I'm at. It becomes a light to my path, so it shows me where to go. That's Psalm 119, verse 105. It, it, the word of God will do, is what does the work, not us. Right? The word of God does the work. Boy, so many, Satan will get you into a works mentality where you're trying to, if I just read more, if I just confess more, and relax and put your eyes on Jesus and be a doer of the word and you will stay on your path. He'll lead you and guide you. Because remember, being led by the Spirit of God, it's not a set of principles. The Spirit of God is a divine person. He's God. He's on the inside of you. If you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he, he is upon you. And he's, he guides you and I into all the truth. He'll keep you on your path. And he always testifies of Jesus, so he always testifies of the word. So let's look at this. It says in James 1.22, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You don't want to see... If, if you don't have the word first place, if God is not first place in your life, then what happens, Satan doesn't have to deceive you. You deceive yourself. You think you're in faith when you're not. You think you're walking in love when you're not. That you could get offended in this area real easy. That word offense literally means to be entrapped and tripped up and... It'll, Offense causes you to distrust everything that God brings in your life to help you. 
So it says here, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, now it's going to tell us what he's like. The hearer is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. It says glass, but that Greek word means mirror. It says here, he beholds himself. So it's a look of inspection. He's, he's looking at himself. He beholds himself. Notice, even when you don't have ears to hear, if you're just listening to the word, you'll still see. You'll get a glimpse of who you are in Christ. you got to see this. The word is so powerful. See, you are created to connect with God's word because you're one spirit with him. So this guy, he's looking. Have you ever sat in church and, you, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's my answer. And by the time you got to your car to leave service, you're in the same place you were before church. Well, what happened? You were beholding yourself when you were hearing the word, but then because it's not the priority in your life, as the service is closing, we start getting laser focused. It usually starts with what, some stuff we have to do. And then it'll go from that to where we want to eat and then, then a lot of stuff. And, and, and now here's the thing. You can do all that and still, if the word's first place, you can still be laser focused in your spirit on the word. But if, you're, if it's not first place, then what happens pretty soon, the enemy's throwing thoughts. You're out there in the hallway fellowshipping and he's throwing thoughts about, okay, man, what am I going to do? I got this bill due three days from now and I got the, and, and my work, they're talking about layoffs and man, I got to go to the doctor and, and, and they're saying the, the initial tests were not looking good. And, and what happens is you just got your eyes off the word and you forget what manner of man you were. So, so it says it right here. It's where he beholds himself and then look at that. The minute we look away from the word, whose way do we go? We go our way. We don't go his way. See, Satan... The game is this. He knows he's defeated. He doesn't ever want you to know he's defeated. He wants you to sit there and go, man, I am so overwhelmed with all the feelings. I could, I could feel the depression. I could feel the anxiety. I could feel the fear. I could see the circumstances. So, you're a Christian. Stop looking at it. Start looking at Jesus. Just forget about everything. What, what, what are you talking about? Just, no, no, just trust him. He will see you through. The Bible says, not if, but when you walk through the waters, he'll be with you. When you walk through the rivers, they won't overtake you. When you walk through the fire, it won't even kindle upon you. Why? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It goes on to say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Oh, because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, right? So it says he beholds himself, and then see, then he goes his way. He takes his eyes off the word of God. He goes his way, and at once forgets what manner of man he was. But, now it's going to describe the doer. This is all that the doer is. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, this is the word of God, and this word look means to look, and here's, the, here's how deep this is, amen. I love amen and amen, amen and amen. Man, this is now, this is, this is so deep. It is. It is so deep. It's keeping more Christians out because they don't have revelation knowledge on it. But look how simple. He looks and keeps on looking. That's all. The doer never takes his eyes off the word. So the doer's going throughout his day at work or whatever he's doing, and man, the word, he's just, he's, he's speaking in tongues. He's just speaking the perfect will of God. He's walking around going, man, you know what? He, he sees a circumstance, but because he has respect for the word, he goes, it is written, my God always causes me to triumph. I can do all things who, through Christ who strengthens me. All things are possible to me simply because I believe him. Right? He makes a way where there's no way. He'll shut doors that no man can open. He'll open doors that no man can shut. This is, that's all a doer of the word is. He just keeps looking. And continues therein, 
he being not a forgetful hearer. See, the hearer of the word just forgets. You forget who you are. You start to think you're just human. Right? Well, are we human? Yeah. But we're also divine. You are a, now we're not God, but we're his offspring. Right? We're made in his image and likeness. We're one spirit with him. You mess with me, you got to mess with him. Right? The Bible says, I, I could abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Right? And the Bible says, if I, if the fear of the Lord, the angel of the Lord encamps round about those that fear him. What is the fear of the Lord? This is what we're talking about. It is the reverence, the honor, and the respect above everything else in life. Him. God, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'm going to believe what you tell me to believe. My spirit and my body don't belong to me. They're yours. Thank you. Right? He walks with me and he's good. You got to know, this is why all this nonsense, all this doctrine that's taught, or all this stuff that's taught as doctrine that is actually false doctrine that says, well, you never know what God's going to do. Oh, come on. His name's Jehovah. Right? The God who reveals himself. I mean, how... You'd have to have a lot of degrees to come up with that one. You never know what he's going to do, right? God wants you to know he's always good. He wants you to know he loves you. He wants you to know he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He wants you to know that the path of the righteous is one of increase only. Because it'll cause you to run to him. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer, look at this, not a doer, we talk about being a doer of the word, but this says, but being a doer of the work, he shall be blessed in his deed. <laughs> See, when you're a doer of the word, you will be a doer of the work. Because see, you, works did not save you. You can't work for a new nature. But the fact that you've been given a new nature as a child of God will, what, what, what the byproduct of that is you will walk out now what he's working in. So you will now, I don't do my own works, I work out what he's working in. See, and this is where the Holy Spirit can just lead you and guide you. Guys, in this life, Satan can make something look so good but the problem is you got to get out of place to get it. God can take your life from where you are right now and move you into a place you've never seen before. It's amazing. It's amazing. So you're a doer of the work. You're going to be blessed in your doing. You're going to be blessed in your deed. So now let's continue with this thought. Let's go over to John. Let's go to John. You, you know this scripture, but I want you to look at it again. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 31. Hallelujah. So, being a doer of the word, we've talked about that. you got to keep your eyes on the word of God. In your situation, you must keep your eyes on the word. How do I do that? It should be coming out of your mouth. So as you read the Bible today, maybe as you're sitting here, a scripture will come up from your heart. I would encourage you to write that down on a card and start speaking it over your life. That's how you continue in the word. That's how you're a doer. You keep looking at it. See, you have to mix the word with faith. So John chapter 8, we'll talk about that maybe as the Lord leads us. So I'm preaching right now. I have so many notes at home, but I can't bring them today. So we're just going to flow with the Holy Ghost a little bit. John chapter 8, verse 31, it says, And then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So these are people that believed on Jesus. You know, there's a lot of Christians. Oh, yeah, I, be I believe. I'm a believer. But then look at what Jesus said to them. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciple. A disciple is a follower. you got to continue. 
you got to remain in the word. It means I don't take my eyes off the word. Let me be a weatherman today. Your future, there are storms, okay? But don't worry about that. You keep believing God through the storm, right? Because the storm, the storms of life can't affect you. Actually, what they normally do, there's a great principle in the word, is you'll see a storm come. Here's, here's the enemy. He gets this guy, Joseph. He gets him sold into slavery. Then the guy's wife who he's working for accuses him of having an affair, so he's thrown in prison. And, and, and this was all designed to stop the plan of God. Joseph, because he stays and believes and hangs on to this vision, he ends up second in command in the most powerful nation in the earth, a place he would have never been able to go to had he not went through this other stuff. So, But here, here's what people who don't know God say. Well, see, God brought that into his life so that he can get him there. Well, that's not his nature. No, no, why do, good, why do bad things happen to good people? Don't read any books about it. It's real simple. Satan's here, right? And, he, and he'll steal, kill, and destroy if you'll let him. Now, now, if you're not a believer, you really can't do much about that at all. You're under his influence, but if you're a believer, you have complete authority over him. And as you, as you peer into the word, as you continue, Jesus said, as you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. Verse 32, and then... Once you're continuing in the word, you will know the truth of the word. And notice what makes you free? The truth of the word. Knowing the word makes you free. See, you have to continue to know. So let's jump over to Mark. Let's go over to Mark chapter 4, and let's look at verse 20. We went, now I would encourage you, Get, go back and you could uh, download our app and, and listen to all these messages because we spend a lot of time on some of this stuff. We went through the whole parable of the sower. I just want to showcase just the one verse for today talking about being a con continuing in the word of God. In Mark chapter 4, verse 20, it talks about, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Now remember... In this parable, it, it likens your spirit, man, to soil. And your spirit grows things. Your future as a child of God is not in front of you. You've heard me say this. It's within you. It's within you. You have to have victory on the inside before you're going to see it on the outside. But what is good ground? What is good ground that produces, where the word could produce, it says, these are they which are sown on good ground. Verse 20, such as hear the word and receive it. That means they approve it, they take it up. This is what that Greek word receive means, and they continue in it. That's what good ground is. If your heart is good ground, you're going to approve the word of God. People will sit in church now, you know, we just don't have that here. It's wonderful, the, the level of hunger. But, you know, people, people can sit in church and just go, yeah, I don't believe that. He better stop talking about money or I'm going to get up and leave. Right? And then pastors get stressed about that. Okay, well, have a nice day. I, I hope you come back. But we're Christians, right? Has God ever, did God force you to come here today? No. Does God force you to read your Bible? No. No. Has God ever stopped you from sinning? Everybody's like, I'm like, do I say no because then I'm kind of acknowledging no? I just, <laughs> can we be real today, right? No, this is a whosoever will let him come. The God of heaven, he loves us so much. And he's like, listen, choose life. I'm for you. And if you mess up, man, I'll forgive you and come on back. And, and I won't even get down on you for the mess you created. I'll clean it up if you'll just give it to me. Let's just go. Amen. I've got a future for you. That's God. You've got to know that about him. Whew. So good ground. 
They receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. So we talked about mixing. I think we need to go to this scripture. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. You guys doing okay today? Man, I'm having fun. Although I got to tell you, I just wish I could preach as good as I hear. Because this message on the inside of me is so big, I'm about to explode. So this is talking about, this is giving us a picture of the children of Israel who chose not to believe what God told them and they died in the wilderness. They never, ever received their inheritance. It tells us why. It says in verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 4, it says, let us therefore fear. This word literally means, let us therefore be cautious. Let us be aware. Let us be diligent. Basically, it's saying, in the literal, it would say, let us therefore be very diligent so that we, so that we never get in unbelief. That's basically what it's saying. Lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. The Bible says you got to be very aware. You got you to gotta really keep your eyes on this because a promise that God gave you, you could come short of it and not walk in it. But now it tells you why in verse 2. It says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto the children of Israel. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the children of Israel, God, God preached the gospel. The prophets, Moses, he said all of it, right? He said, listen, God has given us this land. He said, now there's walled cities, there's people mightier than us. But he's all, don't, don't fear about that. They're, he's already given it. They heard that, but whenever they would encounter a circumstance that looked different, they would instantly default and go, we, Moses, why did you take us out of Egypt? They were slaves in Egypt to come die here in the wilderness. Moses, we, listen, the 12 spies come back, 10 of them go, they gave us 10 reasons why, hey, yeah, it is a good land, but 10 reasons why we can't do it because they're, they're more powerful than us. Have you ever had 10 reasons why you can't walk in what God says he's given you? Here's the difference. Why do you waver? Why, when circumstances come, why do you waver? It's the same reason why they wavered. They didn't mix what they heard. The gospel that was preached, they didn't mix it with faith. What did they do? They walked around and they mixed what they saw, what they felt. They, they mixed that. They would talk about, we can't do this. We're just not, we're not strong enough. The doctor says that, that my knee can't be healed. The doctor says that this sickness, there's nothing else he can do. So what am I doing right now? I am literally mixing what I'm hearing on the outside. This is what, a, this is what it means to continue in the word. You mix what you hear with faith. So how do I do that? You have to have a mixer. And they're on sale today at Faith Family Church. <laughs> oh, that pastor, all he wants is our money. Well, no, they're on sale. They're free. They're free. You know how many of you laughed? I just, I just heard a bunch of mixers. Your mixer's about an inch underneath your nose. It's called your mouth. And so what you do is you hear, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So what you do is you lock on to that. And you walk around mixing it, right? Not just believing it. Believing's great, but faith has to be in two places to work. It has to be in your heart and coming out of your mouth. The word of God is voice activated. So if you're in faith, if you're mixing it, you're walking around. My God always causes me to triumph. I look at this circumstance, it looks like it's going backwards. Nope. 
The path of the righteous is one of increase. I command increase in my life. Satan, I bind you. I shut you down. I'm seated far above you. I've been given the name of Jesus. You get out of my body. You get out of my life. You get out of my family. What am I doing? I'm mixing. Had the children of Israel walked around the wilderness, mixing what they heard with their mouth, they would have been like, let's go. First of all, stone these 10 idiots who gave us 10 reasons why we can't. It's already ours. Right? But they, it kept them out. This is a primary thing in the Word of God. This story is huge. If you will just not take your eyes off the Word and continue to speak it, you'll stay on your path. The word of God, you'll gain revelation because as you peer into it, you'll gain more and more revelation. Let's keep going with this thought. Go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 says it wonderfully. Hebrews 6, 12. The Bible says this. That you be not slothful. Have you ever seen Zootopia? <laughs> Sloth. Right? Right? Don't be slothful. That word in the Greek means lazy. So it says, be not slothful, don't be lazy, but followers of them who through what? <coughs> Faith and patience inherit the promise. It, it literally reads in the Greek, who through faith and patience inherit, or uh, let me read it right, to obtain by inheritance. I obtain everything by inheritance. Or in other words, you could say it this way. I obtain my inheritance through faith and patience. Patience will sure up my mind. It's a spiritual force. It puts pressure. It keeps me underneath the load when my flesh is going, let me try to figure out another way. No, we never run from battles as Christians. If you read Ephesians 6, notice there's no armor for our back. You know why? Because you're a peculiar people. That, that doesn't mean weird. Now, we have great examples in the body of Christ where it could mean weird, but <laughs> we won't go there. It literally means peculiar, means purchased, but it also means surrounded. So I'm a surrounded person. And the Bible says that I put on the armor of God that I might be able to stand against. That is stand face to face with the enemy. So wherever he comes, the word will keep me right in his face. And now patience will come out of my spirit. Who pulmonae, it's endurance. And what it does is it keeps pressure against what I'm facing. You know how it does that? By shoring up my mind and keeping my mind shored up on God's word. Because the enemy, the battle, is a non-issue. You already have victory. But the faith, our faith is the victory. And the reason why the, our faith is the victory, because it brings the victory. That we've already, that we've already been given. I was healed 2,000 years ago. So... Symptoms in my body. I'm a New Testament believer. They have to leave my body because of who I am in Christ. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Jesus was made a curse for me. He explained it in Matthew chapter 8. He said, listen, it says Jesus himself bore my sickness and carried my pain. Well, if he bore it, I don't have to. It's paid for. But I, but I got to keep my eyes on the word because the word according to the parable of the sower, is the only thing that works. I don't do the works. The word works. I rest. The fight of faith is not against the enemy. The fight of faith is so that I stay fully persuaded that what God promised me is true. So let me read this again. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit these promises. Now if you jump down to chapter 10 in verse 23... See how nice I am? I'm going right here in order. In, in, in chapter 10 of Hebrews, in verse 23, it really lays some things out. It says, let us hold fast. This means to seize hold of the profession 
of our faith. Now, the King James says profession. It's the Greek word. It means confession, but let's simplify it. It, it literally means, the, it's the Greek word homo logeo. It means to say the same thing. Let us hold fast to saying the same thing that God says. We have to hold fast, right? I'm, I, I hold fast. I, how do I hold fast? By saying the same thing that God says. God says, Joshua, you meditate in my word day and night, right? Proverbs chapter 4, never let the word of God depart out of your mouth. It should always be in your mouth. Because if you ever, if you ever take your eyes off the word, you're not, you're not a doer of the word, you're not hearing the word, you're going to forget who you are, you're going you're gonna to start walking your own way, your flesh will just take you that way. But if you'll just do this, Oh, he's got a life for you that's amazing. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? Isn't this good? Because he is faithful that promised. Now, if you go further down in the chapter in verse 35, it says this. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Don't cast it away. How do I cast it away? I stop saying the same thing that God says. So you'll know if somebody's in faith because they'll be speaking to their mountain. You'll know if they're not in faith because they'll be speaking about their mountain. Always. See, you, are, you, had, you and I have been created. We can't go anywhere we don't see. And the word will show us where to go. Because, see, we're created to say what we see. See, when you look, we're created. When we look at something long enough, we'll start looking to it, and it'll become our source. If you want God to be your source, just keep looking at him. See, we wait. We listen to Christian music that talks about how my heart's wrenched and my life stinks, but, you know, God, somehow you're going to come through. Well, that's just where that artist was coming from. They need to get in the Word so they could start writing songs and change a couple words and make it faith. But we listen to this because we're trying to get a feeling. Okay, I'm going to get a feeling, and then I'm going to hunger for God. Well, no, no, it doesn't work that way. It, it, spiritually, you hunger after what you feed on. But, oh, if you'll just feed on the Word, feed on the Lord, you'll hunger after Him. If you keep looking... This is a key, guys. I can't tell you how important this is. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. See, patience, it keeps your eyes, and it, keep, it undergirds your mind. It keeps you looking at the word so that the word can go out and bring to pass what it's designed to. But, but what happens is when you're looking at the word, you're speaking it. Father, I thank you. I thank you so much that I'm healed. You, you go to a doctor, and let's say the tumor grew, and you thank the doctor for his report, and you thank him for all that he's doing, and then you walk out the door, and then you say, Father, I believe your report. Above the doctor's report, this tumor has to leave my body. It has no legal right. For it is written, Christ has redeemed me from sickness and disease. It is written, you sent your word and healed me. It is written, right? By his stripes, I was healed. See, I just keep saying that and keep looking at it. And what happens now is I become fully persuaded. Do you see that? This is huge. It says here, for you have need of patience, verse 36, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just, you're just. That means the declared righteous ones shall live. Not have faith events, live by faith. That means, do you know how cool that is? When I read that, it makes me cry. Because that means I, I get to live in complete union with God. I walk in constant revelation. 
of who he is, of what he's given me, of his great love for me. His love in my heart enables me to not consider myself so I could stay looking at his promise so that the word can go out and do the work and bring to pass everything that God said. Listen, we have so many examples of people not obtaining the promises. And it's because they're not doers of the word. They're not continuing in the word. Because the word's not first. We don't judge the word being first by, by what other people say. You know, I'm your pastor. I think it would do you really well to be here every Sunday and every Wednesday to become part of a men's or a women's Bible study, a college and career group, to really get knit in. I, I, I would love that. But you know, sometimes in your life, you're going to find yourself in a phase where you get real busy and the enemy will beat you up. Listen, you could still... You, you could still be right here and live by faith and keep your eyes on the word as you go through a season maybe. where So like let's say you get a job and man, all of a sudden you can't come to church Wednesday. Well, you know, if, if the Lord is prompting you to come to church, then start believing him and watch him move. He'll, he'll get you where you need to be. But stop beating yourself up for these little external things. Keep your, don't, don't define don't define your love for God by your actions. Define everything in your relationship with God by what you're looking at. No, if you look at him, I'm telling you, the more you grow in revelation, the more you grow spiritually, oh man, things will just fall off your life. Holiness, which is our lifestyle, that flows out of righteousness. It flows out of who we are. So many Christians not walking in the blessing of God because they're beating themselves up about every little time they mess up. Give it to him and keep going. Just keep looking. If you look out, then get back and look again and just be like uh, this person. I just, Father, I, I know I've come to you 15 times today about stuff I've said, but I repent of that again. I want to do it right. And, and, and Holy Spirit, I'm yielding myself to you. Teach me how to flow with you so that I don't mess up. God, that excites God. And pretty soon, you'll find, you'll be like, wow, I haven't, I haven't lied, I haven't gossiped, I haven't, I, these things have like fallen off my life. And I'm, and I'm learning more and more about how God loves me. We peer into him. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Why? Because God can't get anything over to him. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition. That means destruction. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So as, we, as we're coming down the mountain here a little bit, go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. In verse 9. Galatians 6, 9. It says, it says the same thing. And let us not be weary in well-doing. See, this word weary means let us not be tired and faint in our mind. You know how you get tired and faint in your mind? You take your eyes off Jesus. Hebrews tells us that. We have to fix our eyes on Jesus or we have to fix our eyes on the Word. I'm telling you, as you peer into the word of God by looking at it and speaking it, you will begin to know who you are. You'll get to meet yourself. It's wonderful. Because see, you'll get to know who you are in him. And no longer will you define your identity by how much money you make or how much money you don't make or how much success in this world you've had or how much you haven't had or your education, or your looks. or You'll stop all that. And you'll see yourself in Christ. There is nothing but world overcomers in Christ. And it'll move your life. See, in Acts 17, 28, it is in him that I live and move and have my being. That's the walk of faith. It goes on to say that we're the offspring of God. I love that. So 
So let's look at this again. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Remember, you've, you've heard me say this before. Faint. This is what fainting is. I have my eyes on the word. I've seized hold of it with my faith. Don't be weary in well-doing because you'll reap if you don't faint. What is that word faint in the Greek language means to relax and let go. I guess it just doesn't work. Why, Why would you say that? Because you're looking at circumstances and not your your father, not his promise to you. He's faithful. Not only will he not lie, he can't lie. His word is forever settled in heaven. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. He is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent, which means change his mind. He doesn't change his mind. He wants victory for you, and he always will. Always will. So now, I want want to go to this scripture. We went to it last week. Uh, Let's go to Romans chapter 4 real quick. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. And if you could pull it up in the NASB, New American Standard Bible, because that brings out the clarity of it. So we have respect for the word. I'm going to look it up here really quick here. So, this is a picture of Abraham believing God, okay? This is a picture of Abraham believing God. He, he's, he's 100 years old, Sarah's 90. His body cannot, or her body cannot possibly produce a child. It's, it's, now, this is beyond all natural hope. But look at what he did. It says, without becoming, and I love this because the King James gives you the insinuation that if you're going to be strong in faith, you know, it says, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. And you've always heard me, being not weak in faith, and I'll always ask the question, well, what does that mean? And everybody goes, well, you're strong in faith. Well, I was studying that, and the Lord goes, really? And I'm like, no, no. If if, If you're not considering your body... Does, or if you're not weak in faith, does it mean you're strong in faith? No. It just means you're in faith. But you've got to get strong in faith. And this will give us a picture of how to do that. See, so many people get in faith, but they've got to stay in faith so that they could obtain the promise. So look at this. It says, without being coming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body. What? He considered his own body now as good as dead since he was about 100 years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb. It says that Abraham, now now this word, he didn't closely observe it, but he did look at his body and he looked at Sarah's body and without becoming weak in faith, he said, yep, my body's dead, her body's dead. There's no possible way in the natural that this this could happen. But then verse 20, yet, and here's the key. See, a lot of believers are looking at circumstances and they take their eyes off the word to look at the circumstance and you go from faith to no faith. But it says here, yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully assured, or in the King James it says, fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able also to perform. So this was Abraham's example. God came to him and said, you're going to have a child. And because Abraham, because he had so much respect for God, and because he knew, he had respect for what God said, he said, I don't care if my body's dead. The circumstances will not dictate what I walk in. No, I believe God. And then the Bible said, he grew strong in faith. How did he do that? Giving glory to God. Well, what does that mean? 
Father, I thank you. He'd walk around the sand during the day. And no doubt his mind is probably giving him problems. Father, I thank you. You told me that if I could count the sand, I'd be able to count my seed. I thank you that Sarah's going to have a child. I thank you. Then at night, man, the enemy, has the enemy come to you at night? See, this is why you got to meditate day and night. All the time. You never let the word depart out of your mouth. At night, he just, I could just see him in the tent. And he's like, okay. And he just, instead of, instead of opening his mouth, because, you know, he's looking at Sarah, he's looking at himself, and he's like, you know, how in the world is this going to happen? I'm sure as she even got bigger, oh, man, I hope this baby doesn't abort. I hope, uh, you know, because she's so old. Right? What would he do? He'd walk outside. Oh, Father, I just thank you. I give you glory. Because you said, if I could count these stars... I could count the seed that you give me. I thank you for our child. I mean, this is what Abraham did. This is his, this is his walk of faith. Now, I want to read a story to you real quickly out of 2 Kings that just kind of came out of my spirit. I just want to read this to you. 2 Kings chapter 4, it tells about a, a wonderful lady. I want, to, I want you to see a picture of this lady. It's the Shunammite woman. 2 Kings 4, verse 8. And I'm just going to read this. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Look at the respect she has. Let us make a chamber, a little chamber. She, she's like, let's, let's build on a bedroom for him on the wall and let us set uh, for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he comes to us that he shall turn in here. And it fell on a day that he came there. This is talking about now. He's talking about Elisha fell on a day that he came there, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and he said unto her, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. Basically, he's like, man, you've been blessing us. Right? What is to be done for you? Notice she, she had respect for God. Right? What, what is it to be done for you? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? Elisha's going, you know, do you want me to put in a good word for you to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. See, she didn't have any motive. No motive. Just, no, you don't have to go, you know, put my name before somebody. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily, she has no child and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, you will embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, Thou man of God, do not lie unto, my hand, unto thy handmaiden. He's like, man, don't mess with me because I really want a child, right? And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Eliza said unto her, Elisha said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. So he had a servant carry him to his mother. So his head was hurting. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. So, so this Shunammite lady, she has this son. She sees this, him grow up. One day a servant's bringing him in from the field. And for hours until noon, she's holding him. And he's like, my head, my head. She's holding him. And then he dies. She's there and she watches him die. So think about this. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. 
And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the uh, donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come again. So her, instantly, now look at what she did. She's in a no-win situation and she knows God's her answer. She knows God's her answer because she had respect for the things of God. She didn't know it, but she was doing Ephesians 6. She's preparing to stand. Okay? And he said to her, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It, it shall be well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me. That's awesome. So they were going fast. I like that. Except I bid thee. So she went and came into the man of God to Mount, to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? In the natural, what would be the answer to that question? No, I'm having the worst day of my life. My, uh, it's horrible with me. I just lost a son. My husband's distraught. He lost a son. And uh, the child is dead. But because she had respect for God, and because of all that transpired, I can't wait to meet this lady to find out all that transpired in her life. She responded, it is well. How are you going to respond to the circumstances of your life? Are you going to respond because you're looking at the natural? Do you think she was looking at the natural? She couldn't have been. Because she wouldn't have spoke all as well. Do you see this? She had to hold fast to the confession of her faith without wavering. I'm telling you, where you're sitting today, you're free. You have the victory. You have the Spirit of God on the inside of you. You have all these promises. The, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, watching over his word to perform it in your life. Our job is literally to be willing and obedient to do this one thing. I'm going to keep my eyes on his word. If you, if you leave with nothing else, that's what this message is all about. You keep your eyes on the word. Man, I am not... See, see people will come up to you and, and you've you got symptoms going on in your body and you feel horrible and, and, and they come up to you. I'm telling you, learn this. Pastor, how are you feeling today? You know, I don't, I don't care how I'm feeling. But this is what I'm believing, all is well. Well, tell me what's going on. No. No, I'll tell you. Well, actually, I can't tell you what's going on. What's going on is this. Jesus bore my sickness and carried my pain. I'm healed. Life is great. All is well. Yeah, but come on. you got to be real. Yeah, you could be real. If the Shunammite lady was real, guess what? That wouldn't be in 2 Kings chapter 4. Does that make sense? You will never face, here is the revelation of your life, that you'll never face anything that's bigger than the God who's with you and in you. You got you, this revelation that my God loves me so much that he will never leave me, he will never forsake me, and he's greater than anything that I will ever face in life, and so now I'm going to position myself where I run my race fixing my eyes on Jesus so I never grow faint and weary in my mind that this, this fruit of my spirit, this spiritual force of patience locks me into the word of God to where, yes, I see my circumstances, but I am, I'm fixed and know he's my answer. This is the walk of faith. This is persistent faith.